Good day. I'm Martin Gago with Market Radius Research. It's Wednesday, November the 1st. In the past week, the world of graphene, graphite, lithium batteries, and other industries was shaken as China announced restrictions on the sale of certain types of graphite as part of its ongoing tit-for-tat trade and geopolitical dominance spat with the U.S. and Western economies. China produces 61% of global natural graphite and 98% of the final processed material. We've got Stuart Jara, CEO of Hydrograph, joining us to discuss the situation. Hydrograph produces and develops graphene and graphene-based solutions for composites, coatings, lubricants, energy storage, and many other industries. But please remember, this is neither recommendation or investment advice. We're here to learn about Hydrograph and what this news implies and implicates for the company and its opportunities. Stuart, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, this is uh, a part of a lot of geopolitical news that's going on right now. Can you just give us a bit of an overview of what's happened in China and what kind of uh, regulations or uh, roadblocks they've put in? Yeah, first, Warren, thank you again for the opportunity to speak to you and, and to your, your audience. Yeah, it's an interesting time. There's a lot's going on in the world, specifically with this topic. Um, China announced further restrictions uh, on the exportation of gra of graphite, and, and as you mentioned, they they make sixty five percent of the world uh, graphite that's goes in the world, and therefore that's going to impact not only graphite but all the byproducts that are made out of graphite and what it goes into, which is multiple industries from you know your tennis rackets to cars to batteries. Um, you know, graphite's a pretty well used uh, element in its and its byproducts as well. And it's really a tit for tat situation because earlier that the U.S. had restrictions on chips for AI applications to China, right? So it's it's a it's a tit for tat between two large uh, governments and entities. Um, so everyone that depends on graphite and many producers of graphene depend on it, they will be impacted. Um, we're different. Uh, we don't rely on graphite to make graphene. We take a totally different process. Um, so it's really to reassure customers and potential customers that our approach to the market is much different than others. And it's one that's actually considered the ways to mitigate the geopolitical risk and even pandemic risk by saying that we could produce graphene locally close to the customer source using local raw materials. And when you say local, you're not your business model is more than just you're setting up your own factories wherever Hydrograph wants to put them. You're actually doing this more in almost in a partnership, placing it very close to the 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 needed uh, demand uh, near or close to or in the actual uh, customer's facility. Correct. That's absolutely true. So. What, what we had the benefit of is when we were building our facility or, or actually designing how we're going to produce our graphene, right, was on the heels of coming out of the pandemic. And we saw how multiple industries were impacted by the, the, the global supply chain that was put in place. Let's be honest, the pandemic showed us the risk of these global supply chains. Right? Yep. So with that in mind, we said, let's build a modular scalable unit that we could actually place at the customer location and use raw materials locally, acetylene and, and oxygen, to be able to produce for the customer and minimize this, the supply chain risk. By doing that, we actually mitigate you know, cross-border issues, whether it be pandemic, uh, global political, economic you know, tariffs. Um, we've, we've actually insulated our business model to those forces allowing our customers to be reassured that we'll continue to be able to supply them because of our local dynamics. That makes a, a lot of uh, sense and is really kind of ideal. It, it's sort of really on demand, uh, the shortest supply chain possible where it's next to or within your own uh, facility. Personally, I, I think it's very, um, not that I'm a geopolitical expert, but all China is doing right now by putting those uh, export controls on it is they're just signaling to the world is we can't trust China as a source of supply. We better find alternatives and creating opportunities for companies or, or increasing opportunities for uh, companies like yourselves. 
Yeah, and it's not just China, right? So China was specifically to the graphene and graphite. That's yeah. directly to our, our markets. But the, the the issues in Ukraine had impacts to the supply chain system. The, the issues happening now with Israel will have an impact. Um, so while China is a direct line of sight because a lot of people make graphene out of graphite, not us, remember, yeah. you know, but it, it actually pushes us to really think about how do we actually get smarter and still be able to provide economically, reliably, and locally key products, which we saw with our production unit. Yeah. And just to, you mentioned acetylene and oxygen. You, It's basically done through a combustion process with acetylene and oxygen in one of your machines and out the bottom crudely, uh, graphene pops out to the specification that the client wants and it, it, it's there for the, theirs for to produce uh, as they need. That's right. And acetylene and oxygen, it's a welding gas, yeah. which is all produced locally because they move in cylinders. So they don't have a big distribution area, which is why our raw material is local. It goes into, uh, it's really a detonation process more than a combustion process. But we okay. detonate the acetylene, the molecules rearrange themselves, out comes graphene and pure carbon. Um, and we do have some flexibility to customize that for the customer needs increase the surface area, decrease the surface area, increase the layers or decrease the layers. That's the flexibility we we, we believe we have with our processing unit. Um, and, and what's the value to customers? But again, let's, re, let's remember, what does graphite go into? Again, it goes from everywhere into tennis rackets to, you know, auto body parts to batteries and, 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 and semiconductors. So it's a very important product and, and graphene is replacing graphite in all those applications. So, yeah. you know, imagine your battery manufacturer and all of a sudden your your source of graphene or even graphite is gone. We solve that problem. You are in the business development portion of your growing your business here. You've got a lot of you've got a big funnel of, of business. Can you tell us where are we on landing new customers and and you've made some announcements with partnerships and working towards uh new products. Uh, give us a quick update on that. Sure. So right now we're almost 55 customers that we're engaged with, uh, 23 NDAs, uh, still 20 different applications. But now we have 20 customers testing our graphene in their products and six that are about to start. So we're increasing our penetration with customers. Um, we hope to be announcing some more partnerships in the near future here. Um, so again, we, we focus in, in lubricants, composites, uh, resins, and coatings, but the other markets like energy storage and cement, we work with other partners to do that. So we'll be announcing some of those partnerships here soon. We, th we still see that we're on track to have our major contracts, first major contracts to be signed in the second half of next year. Stuart, you recently announced a financing in the market here. What are the uh, use of proceeds? Uh, yeah, you're correct. We we did announce uh, a, a new fundraising round, which will close in November. Uh, most of the funds will be used to continue work on the business development and applic application development side. As you know, our technology and our production is now set, which allows us to focus almost all our attention to customers and application development. With this round, we're looking to expand our investor base. Uh, we did announce as part of the announcement that Gulf Cryo, a major industrial gas company in the Middle East with operations in seven countries and about a 70 year history of operation is taking a position in Hydrograph. You can see the synergies with Gulf Cryo as they produce both acetylene and oxygen, our raw materials, and we happen to share some of the same potential customers. It, Martin, it really is an exciting time for Hydrograph. Is there a um, strategic partnership between you and Gulf? The partnership isn't totally formalized yet, um, but you can see us. We are having discussions. Um, there, there's clearly an interest that they have in us and, and we in them. Um, and it also will support other application developments we're going to be doing in the region with other partners, which we can't announce at this point, but we're hopefully able to do so in the near future. Stuart, thanks a lot for that update and uh, all the best and talk to you again soon. Great. Thank you, Martin.